Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Digital Experience Team uh, retro video. We'll go over what went well and what to improve on for the last two week period. Uh, today is Thursday, March 24th. Uh, so first up for things that went well, Nathan has the first point. Yeah, um, just want to say the, the changes just made to slippers and Laura for implementing them. Like it actually looks like it's coming together, like the new branding, the new typography, the new colors. It feels good, I will say, like working on the refresh branch and having all that stuff already there. I don't know. I see, I see a possibility. <laughs> I see hope. Uh, John? Yes, just wanted to say thank you to Nathan, um, Javier, and Tina for the help. Uh, thanks, Nathan, for, for pushing the changes from, to sleep, from sleepers to NPM because that didn't block me. And also Javi for, for, for helping me on some other things. And Tina for the, the design of the Vitus Paris page. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm loving it. Uh, thank you, guys. I think I'm next. Um, just a general statement. I don't know if everyone's feeling this way, but I'm just feeling that the collaboration on our team has been really good. Probably the best I've ever experienced in my entire career, um, personality wise, um, efficiency wise. I just, I'm finding that um, we found like a good, a good flow and we're, we're working really well together. Um, I don't just mean inside the UX team. I just mean like engineers with uh, design as well. Um, so thank you everyone. I think I was last. Yeah, agree. Yeah. I also, yeah, I posted in the chat that thank you. We're all in this together. And now the high school musical song is like stuck in my head. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, so things to improve on. I have the first point. Um, when I moved the homepage over to the new repo, I didn't delete it in the old www repo um, for a couple of reasons. I know the release post runs a job. Um, you can do like a bundle exec rake release and it kind of adds like um, increases the release version automatically on a certain page. So I didn't want to mess with any of that. Um, and I had thoughts about the uh, review apps um, or booting the site up locally would land you on kind of a broken page. Maybe we should have a placeholder page, da 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 da. So I had thoughts. I see Tyler has a couple of comments in response to that. First one, just like leave it for now. We should do stuff with it, but like not in the next month. Um, like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And like we really don't want to break release post process because it's like very annoying to troubleshoot. So that is a great call. Um, Sorry, and I didn't think about local. So review app, um, and this is good for everyone who ever looks at a review app. Um, the review app in the www repo tries to be clever about if you click the view app thing, it will like look at the file that has like the most changes or the first changes, and it'll like try to take you to the thing that rendered that. So sometimes it works great because people like changed an index.html file it's like yeah that's the web page but sometimes you change like a data file and it's like that's not real like that doesn't exist on the like server um so like but one way or another it rarely will take you to the home page unless you have changed like home slash index right so like i think re review apps let's not worry about too much because people either don't find what they're looking for anyways and we have to help them or like they get smartly taken to where they're going um local stuff uh maybe let's do a to do to I, I think placeholder is probably a good idea even like i would like spend zero time on it and put like a like a, a p tag that's like hey sorry like this is no longer a thing like good luck um yeah cool um uh, yeah i'll add a to do for that and um yeah i did add notes in the release post like i added documentation for that team saying like you can run this command and it says it'll change the thing but you also have to do it over here um, so hopefully that's kind of covered for now and yeah, uh, cool. And Tyler, you have the next, uh, point. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'll amend this because like there's good points. Like, I don't know, like the thing that I said was like, like we got to stop working late. Um, not because it's like, it's immoral or bad to like work a little extra, which is why maybe it's like, don't, maybe it's not stop working late, but like we got to not stress ourselves out. Like, I, th I think that's what I, that's what I really mean by this. Like sometimes like, I don't know, most of us here are on salary. I don't know how contractors work if you're hourly or not. Um, but like, you know, I think the deal, the general deal in like labor relations with salary is like, sometimes you work less, sometimes you work more, but like you get paid consistently. So like, cool, we can work a little bit more. Um, and like, you know, sometimes you're just feeling it. Like sometimes you're, you're in it to win it and you're like, hell yeah, like, let me grind this out. And, and it's easier to be done. What I really mean though, is that like, what I am hearing a bunch is that people are like 
stressing about stuff that is like broken or like non-existent or that is like in a bad state and like that folks are like overextending themselves to solve these problems which like i think we should do a better job of letting them be problems because like the business will not learn how to do this thing well if we solve all of the problems for like the like if there are problems caused by some root cause and we like go and like bend our backs to like bend over backwards to fix them like there's no feedback loop for like hey maybe like we should consult with the team on like due dates and stuff before we give one like they're just like oh no like they'll always figure it out so like it's not to say don't have a sense of urgency and like don't work hard and like you know don't see if we can knock this out of the park because it would be really cool if we could and i think we can but it is to say that like if you are stressed i hope that you will consider stopping because like like work hard but not to not don't push yourself past a certain point because at that point that's like an organizational failing and like a business failing and like no person there's like some level of like at some point there is no more that your effort can do to fix the problem because the problem is like from somewhere else it is not like oh i haven't worked hard enough right like it is like i have like the parameters for this are incorrect and we need to like readjust but if you push yourself past that point no learning happens on an organizational side that's that's what i mean it's like you know i don't know put in a couple extra hours like great we'll get there faster but like don't sweat it yeah and then just adding on to everything tyler just said it, it just it both feels like the most focused quarter we've ever had like i don't feel like i'm getting fire drills all the time yet um but I also feel like it's the most chaotic. The scope is constantly changing. The direction is kind of constantly changing. Um, and we do have this kind of arbitrary due date, um, which I think Laura also chimed in about. I'll just read my second comment after that. And sorry to send it back to Laura, but I feel like even if we had this arbitrary due date, we still should have been consulted about like what workload we could do within that time as like a base level. And then if we can do something beyond that, great. But we never really were given the chance to even scope out the project. Um, hopefully that's why Phil's is here and I'm hoping like in the future we can do better. Um, but we definitely need that opportunity to like even see what work is gonna be possible before committing to anything. Yeah, I, I don't know where April 27th came from. It just came and was told to the whole company um, before we even had specs or you know had even seen the workload. Um, and now we have to commit and it does feel very arbitrary. So that is kind of spooky because I keep seeing, you know, messages in Slack being like, you know, what about A-B testing? And, you know, answers being like, don't worry about A-B testing. We're razor focused on April 27th. And it's like, okay, like I get that there's urgency, but, you know, I, I don't know where April 27th came from um, and, and why, why, <laughs> um, yeah. I think where we are, Barker might have, the next one yeah i uh i just i think it's going to take a little extra from the team for the next two sprints to meet that deadline um i'm i'm not seeing a way around that um but it'll be really exciting it's like a really exciting project that we're working on and it it will be great um but if you look at like the way the epics were scoped out before we had that deadline it kind of hinted towards the amount of work that we need to do. Um, so I think we tried to communicate out, but the deadline's still there. Yeah, I guess like that's like like the thing that I wrote in response to the agenda is like, I don't know, like there's still like a level of like at a certain point of like extra work required, the answer is like, well, it like isn't gonna happen. You know, like, which, like, is it, like, not to resign to that, but I just like, like, we, like, I, yeah, I don't know. I just like, I don't think, like, like, meeting the due date shouldn't supersede like the good principles of like what makes GitLab a good place to work, right? I think that's what I, like. There are like great things about this place, and like, if we do away with them to meet April twenty seventh, then like, that's bad, and then like, and then like, we'll never get them back again, too, right? Like, that's it's, like once you like. Like once it's changed, it is like very hard to change it back the other direction. And like this is the whole thing with like software companies like GitLab, where it's like, well, you know, 
like you, there's always more work to be done than you can get done in any given time frame. And like, if you do it in such a way that is unsustainable, you will not sustain it. So like, we must work in a sustainable way. And like, sure, maybe that's 45, 50 hours a week for like a couple of weeks, but like, it is not 60 and it is not stressing out, right? All right, I wanna uh, pose, ask a question. So um, what can we do in the future so that this doesn't happen again? Actually do quarterly planning. Also, like a real legit quarterly planning where we sit there, we scope out the work, we rank order it, what we can do, what we can, what our stretch goals are. That's what my biggest like complaint for the last year has been is we've been not been doing quarterly planning, actual quarterly planning. It's been just like someone up top saying this is what we need to do, and then we're just accepting it, and we need to actually figure out what's possible. I guess one thing I want to add is I guess related to the deadline. I wish we would have been able to scope out the work before making a deadline. Like we scoped the deadline before even communicating with Jam 3. And I'm sorry, but that doesn't really make sense. Like what if in a, a bad scenario that Jam 3 just couldn't come through with what we were expecting, then that deadline is like, it, it's impossible. And so, I don't know. I think we need a little more information before we commit to things, at least deadlines. I posted in the Zoom chat too, but the Gantt chart that Jam3 has um, is like a tool for Jam3. Um, and I think it's working for them, but I don't think that it's working for our team. Um, I keep seeing inconsistencies for both of the squad meetings I was in yesterday. Um, we saw some weirdness in it. And uh, it's like, even on the best of day, if everything goes well, yeah, we, we can maybe follow this timeline, but it does seem like our team's work was kind of like forced in there around you know the Jam3 Jam work um, without our consultation. Um, and without, again, having any mocks or designs. So like I, I've taken, you know, project management courses and I think that Gantt charts can work well, but this one did not serve us. Um, Do you want to jump we, into the next one? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is more of a, like I said, a self call out um, because I guess for the last couple of iterations, I've been kind of just organizing work, but I'm realizing that I'm like, it's just too big. Like a full page is way too big. It's too many waypoints. Like what happens if someone's away? What happens if someone's sick? Like you can't really take that over. And I think I saw it as well with that, with Daniel's MR. Um, if it was smaller, it would have been a lot easier to take on, but Miguel pretty much had to like redo the page, <laughs> um, which is not good. So at least this iteration and going forward, like uh, for example, we have kind of the first designs for the, the new homepage and I'm going to, do it into sections so like the top section is like one issue the next section is the next issue um and it's way more manageable that way we can also do things in parallel it's just it's way better um i think megan wanted to add on to that yeah I, i'm glad you said something similar because as i was working on the customer's page like at first looking at the issue i'm like all right i have to make a whole page i've never really had to do that before it's going to be a big one but i got this and then as i was working on it i'm like oh man, like each section of this page is like its own component that like manipulates data and does stuff. So I think going forward, um, at least like for my own, like uh, just like vocalizing or showing how much work would actually, not just like slapping eight points on something, but like not really showing what's actually gonna go into those eight points, um, making smaller issues might communicate that better for myself. So I think I'm the next one. Um, so uh, after the pre-year was uh, implemented in the buyer experience repo, I'm seeing that uh, the formatting is a little hard to read. I don't know if we are using a standard or or that is GitLab's standard, but I, I, I'm not sure if I, I'm the only one, but I'm having hard times reading the HTML parts of, of, of the code. I don't know if it's possible to, to review some other standards or check if we can apply another standard uh, to format the code. I want to add something actually about prettier. Maybe it's an action item. I noticed stuff that you don't want to commit is getting run through prettier. And so I'm wondering if there's a flag we can put on because there's a couple of times I have 
like new files that I've been working on and I'll jump from branch to branch on and I'll still have them there. But then they just light up like a Christmas tree and I, I have to either stash them. It's just frustrating. And so maybe there's a way to make it only on stuff you want to commit or state. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's possible. Want to move on to Dennis? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, just make sure to tag me in an issue or an MR just to make sure that tracking is still in place because I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of questions from different stakeholders about performance of like before and after. And we need to make sure that data is still there and collecting. Um, yeah. Lauren? <laughs> Hey, my, mine's, mine's a fun one we should work on. Um, our team's having a moment. We're doing amazing things. And I just want to call out that discretionary bonus program. Um, so if someone's doing something really great and shining, let them know. Um, we should be tossing around this team all the time. So go for it. They got a little Slack bot and everything. This is another place where like my point about like not working actually like I I went to like recommend Nathan for a discretionary bonus and like you you can't because he like worked like at like midnight last night or 3 a.m. whatever the time zone difference is but like you are specifically disqualified from discretionary bonuses for working late. Um, so like I think that GitLab is telling us like don't do it right. Um, but yeah, like we should we should give more of these out. But it's it's tough when it's like I want to give it out to everyone for working late, but then GitLab's like, nope, doesn't count. Like, don't work late. Someone find the legal loophole. I'll just say I'm working in Europe. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to look at it again because I had it up this morning, but I closed it. But uh, I think it also talks about how like if people just do their jobs, you can't give them a discretionary bonus, like if they were assigned a project um, and they do that project, even if they knock it out of the park, that doesn't count for discretionary bonus. Cause I also looked into like, you know, rewarding people for the work that they've done recently. And it's uh, a lot of it was just work that was assigned that we did. And apparently that's just like our job. So it is like a little puppet string kind of deal that we have to. Yeah, but on. just try it, submit it, write something that looks great. See what happens. You might be surprised, you know? Yeah, even if it's part of our job, like technically everything we do is part of our job, but it's like, did they go above and beyond in that thing that was a part of the job? Maybe that's where it comes in, I don't know. Yeah, I know it was Michael Scott that said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> cool. Uh, I think I have the last point. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just added it. Um, now, because I realize that Ilsa's here and uh, this is something she probably needs to hear, but um, I'm finding it um, as a designer on the team, difficult to balance work assigned to me or that I've signed for myself for that specific sprint and also reviewing MRs that are um, for issues that I have already closed weeks ago. I'm context switching. I really wanna support our team because they're, they, they need um, us to review them for design, um, but then I'm struggling to assign weight points to that because I never know when those MRs are coming my way. And then this particular week was pretty challenging because I had a lot to review and I had a, a lot on my sprint board. As, as you can see, there was like, it was full. So I don't have a solution, but it is something that is uh, always, always happening to me. Uh, I'll pose another question. Can we adjust our sprint plan to accommodate? So I think everyone on the team needs some, some points weighted for reviewing MRs. It'd be great. Sometimes you just don't know when they're coming your way. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> On that note, I guess uh, we've got a couple action items in there. Um, I'll look into a placeholder image, uh, placeholder homepage for dub dub dub. Uh, Barker can look at team collaboration 
um, project planning for setting due dates, and we can look at uh, the prettier implementation. Um, cool. I think that closes us out. Uh, we're after time also. So thank you so much, everyone, and we will see you next time.